Manus flat on the canvas. We are ready to rock and roll. Second round of action. There is a cut on Manus. Yeah. It's just like Jesus. Martial arts. Yeah. My man B Hop got knocked out, dropped out the ring last night. <laughs> <laughs> I need a little judo baby. I need me a little judo baby. And uh, let's, let's do it, Ron. Let's do it. You see what failed me next? You got face for me, dude. I got face for me. That's nice. Martial arts. Chat. Hello, I'm John Boy McElroy, and we're continuing with the coverage and build of Bellator. New to Castle uh, takes place on the 9th of February Martial at Metro Arts. Radio yeah. Arena. I'm pleased to say we're joined at this time by the assassin, Fabian Edwards. How you doing, big Martial man? You alright? I'm alright, I'm doing good. How are you doing yourself? Hanging in there, brother. I'm hanging in there. Uh, still trying to get rid of this Christmas pudding. So, uh, but that's what I get for, for being fat and lazy in it. But, uh, aye, man, please, please, you're, you're coming on and, um, Obviously, you you're on a f- fucking hell, man. Momentum. I'm a big sucker for momentum. Amateur pro. You've 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 just been on a roll, man. You must you must be just just buzzing in your MMA career just now, right? Yeah, it's been, it's been good. You know, um, I've been on a roll since since my since my um, amateur debut. Fifteen and all, ten and all amateur, um, five and pro. Nice. So, um, fourteen finishes. So it's, it's it's been going good. Folk have described you as cocky and arrogant, right? But see, when you've got all that momentum on your side, it's just nothing but confidence, right? It's just it's just confidence, and that's it. You know, um, just confidence. I'm confident with the people around me. Aye, and um, I'm just confident for my for my my abilities, and that that's all that people are seeing. I'm just I'm just putting it out there for the world to see, and some people perceive that. I was cocky, but I don't really give two two fucks to be honest. Yeah, exactly, man. And why should you? That's it, man. You're 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 doing all the right things and surround yourself with the right people it goes a long yeah. way for sure, man. See, before we get any uh, Lee in Newcastle, I just want to talk a wee bit about your your career and obviously you and your brother growing up in Birmingham, right? How did you all get involved in this crazy thing we call MMA, mate? Yeah, um, my brother's been involved for about eleven years now. I've only been involved for about four years, right? So um, I, I didn't. I wish I started it at the same time he did, mm-hmm. but I was just <laughs> I was just being a little shit, you know. <laughs> being, that's pretty much it. I was just being a little shit, and uh, I did. I wish I started it, but I'm happy because I, I never started it too late. So yeah. I've still got a chance to do to do great things. Yeah, man. Was it um, was it fair to say that you were a wee bit of a tour rag growing up and that kind of thing, and MMA's been a, an outlet for you? Yeah, defo, defo. They were they were in Birmingham. I grew up, um, Erlington. You know, a lot of kids got in trouble and just right. got, I just got I just got influenced by the wrong crowd. Aye. So um, MMA defo was an outlet for me, and it defo drew me away from all those people that was bad in my life. And it's a positive now. You know, I got a lot of positive people around right. me that want me to be good, and Aye. it's um just relief. Absolutely, man. Was it? Did you know what MMA was when you when you started it? Would like be involved in martial arts first, or was it just boom, stay in the stay on the mats in the cage and that kind of thing? I, I knew what it was, cause my my brother my brother has been doing for a sure. few years, but I, I've never started anything before. I just I used to do a bit of rugby rugby when I was younger. Mm-hmm. That's about it, to be honest. But I've never done any sort of fighting. Well, you've certainly made up for that now, man. I mean, you're talking yeah, about your, your amateur career. I mean, looking at that record, finish after finish. But the first time I set eyes on you was um, was McDonald and Daily Bellator, the one seventy nine. I remember you seeing him getting in that boy's face and his scales, and then I was talking to myself, thinking, "Oof, I hope he backs it up." And it was a fly, <laughs> flying fucking knee, and I was like, "Woof," because you look so relaxed, man. You look just so chilled in the cage, and then out of nowhere, it was that. Yeah, that that is the thing, you know. Um... I always back it up. That's what people been. That's what people need to understand. It doesn't matter how much I talk, I've always delivered it. And um, you'll never see me in a fight, standing in front of somebody having a tear up. That's not my style. Aye. My style is to be cool, calm, and pick my shots. And that's what I done. I picked my shots and I took him out with a flying knee. Yeah, man. I think I may be remembering this wrong, but your corner was sort of calling for it, like oh, if he rushes in, something like that. The knees there. Yeah, they, they, they was calling for um. Just for a knee when he was rushing in, Aye. but I, I practiced the fly knee a lot, a lot. So um, I just seen it. I seen the opening, and it's the same with Chadwick. They're very similar in styles. So no doubt he knows it anyway. So I don't mind saying it. He knows I'm gonna be flying across that cage trying to trying to take his head off. <laughs> Can't wait, man. Can't wait. Finishes kept on coming after that though. Like you had that three, two or three subs in a row. 
Um, the one that really yeah. I really liked, man, was the Conte fight because um, he's a big boy and, and you were losing that fight as well, switching stances and all that kind of stuff. I mean, by then I was a fan watching you, but like when I was watching that fight, I was curious because Conte's a big boy, man, and, and I was curious yeah. to see how you matched up with that. Didn't seem to trouble you at all, right? That's the thing. I'm a I'm a range fighter. It doesn't matter how tall he is. I still I still got a bad this like a bit of judgment off the um the distance. So um, he was the big guy. He was the biggest guy I fought. Like he was long. He was rangy. Yeah. He was trying to keep his range against me. But I I, I tell it, I tell all my opponents it's different when they're in there with me, and some of the public won't see it. But it's the little feints I'm doing to upset the rhythm. And the movement, and they're not understanding it, and then that's and that's what it is. Just the, the, the think what I'm doing is very <laughs> might seem simple, but when they're in there, they realize, oh, okay, then this is hard, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's almost like I mean, this is just my amateur opinion. You're watching you when I see you switching stances like that. Like I grew up in Taekwondo and that kind of thing, and all of that's the it's a rhythm to upset the other guy's rhythm. You know what I mean? You're you're feeling them out, but you yeah. don't want to be predictable as well. I guess is that the idea. Yeah, that is the idea, you know. It's, it's going there, upset people with them, start, stop. And it's just mixing up. And, and that's why when I had the interview over um in America and they asked me about gay God, I just said, it, it does everything. It, just, it doesn't do anything special. And that's what I feel like I do. I feel like I bring a different style to these guys. I'm not just a straightforward, flat-footed, I'm going to throw punches or throw, I throw... I mix it up, switch stance, show you a different look catch you with something else and that's and that's the reason I am very confident I'm going to take Chadwick out in the first round fair because play. I'm just I'm different fair play man let's get to to, to the butcher big uh, Lee Chadwick I met him in uh, Glasgow he was up here for ACB I think it was about two years ago um, and he's a big boy as well man I remember shooting his hand thinking why the fuck does this guy make my way you know what I mean but <laughs> I, I, size obviously we spoke about Conte but semi-serious mate how, how, do you, how do you rate him how do you rate his skills and that kind of thing we say sorry I love it. Oops, sorry, I love it. Yeah, how do you how do you rate uh, Lee as a fighter? Honestly, I'm, I'm just being honest. I just think his skill set is very amateurish, and that is it. I think his his how he's built his how you imagine him to fight overhand into the wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know, he couldn't the striking. He couldn't rely on keeping his distance and trying to be technical. He's not. He hasn't got that about him. It's the overhand. Or try wrestle, then he gasses out because he carries too much muscle. So, like, really and truly, I don't. This is not the hardest fight for me. On paper, everyone's looking and thinking, "Oh, fucking hell, he's had a lot of experience." Sure. But, eh? but that experience don't mean anything when he's been doing the same thing for the, for the last ten years. And the, and the thing that you're doing is not great. It's just average or below average. So I look forward to going there and showing everyone how easy. This fight is <laughs> fair play, mate. We've seen wee jags back and forth, obviously with that interview MMA UK, but online as well, man. It looks like uh, we were talking about mental warfare there a wee bit as well. Is there a legit beef though? Like, is it or is it just you know how, how you go about things? This this is a, it's never legit beef because no one's done anything personal. Aye. But it's this man that I'm fighting. He's trying to take what I'm working for, and my approach is fuck you. I don't like you. After the fight, we'll shake hands because I understand the I understand the work that I get put in, and I understand I understand all the sacrifice we make as fighters. Yeah. So at the end, at the end, there's respect, there's cheers, shake your hands, go by, go out our separate ways. But in the build up, I don't like any of my opponents. I never will. I will never be the friendly guy to bring a packet of sweets on stage and share it. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will never be that guy. You know yeah. what I mean, I'll be the guy to tell you I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna come across and take your head off, and that's what I'm. That's the guy that I am. Fair play, man. Is that is that help uh, motivate? You? It's, it's been that kind of mean uh, attitude, I guess. Yeah, that's cause that's it. that's the thing. Everyone everyone view it as a sport. In my head, it's not a sport. It's we're trying to kill. It's two men that trying to kill each other for entertainment. Sure. You know, I, it's blood sport. So I'm not going in there to think. Oh, I know why. It's only uh, he can potentially hurt me. So. There's no, there's no games. There's no, I'm gonna be nice to him. There's nothing. Is when I'm preparing for for a fight, all I'm thinking is I'm gonna take this man out, and that is it. Fair play, mate. Not to be Debbie Downer, but when we're talking about Lee Chadwick, there's a wee bit of history there of him not making weight, particularly recently. But 
Is that something that concerns you, or do you just you just got to concentrate on your own thing? I guess, right? I've told him, make weight, miss weight. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just show up. <laughs> that's it. You just want to scrap. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I want to scrap. Just show up. Just show up. Yeah. That's it. I said you can make weight if you want or not. You can give me my twenty percent, my thirty percent, whatever it is. I don't care. I just, I just want to be ninth of Feb and look across and see him across from me. Yeah. And that's it. If he want to make weight, that's on him. But regardless, the fight's the fight's getting taken. Even if he's twenty kg is over, I'm still taking that fight. Fair play, big man. I'm sure it'll all work itself out anyway. And it's it's going to be a big old scrap in Newcastle. Um, I never want our fight to look too far ahead, but you you seem like a confident guy, so I'll ask it anyway. After Lee, if you get a W, what's next in store for the assassin? What, what we got planned? First of all, we never say if. <laughs> we never say if. <laughs> it's, on the positive, it's on the positive, you know. I never, there's no losing, but I want Mike, I want, I want Mike Shipman. You know, he's, um. Shipman on your eyes. I've, I've been calling, I've been calling for him for ages. And he's not even, I haven't been calling for him because I think, oh, fucking, I said that he's the toughest. He's mm-hmm. just that people, when you talk about middleweights in the UK, his name will come up, Shipman's name will come up. Yeah. And I can't have I can't have people thinking, Oh, I wonder how these two would match up. I want people to say, Yeah, Mike Shipman, but Fabian took his head off. Yeah. Lee Chad, Fabian took him out. There's no uh maybe that could be the fight in the UK that can determine the best middleweight. Cause I'm the best best middleweight. So it's just about going out there and proving and that's the only reason why I want to fight him. That's awesome, man. I can't wait for a scrap and I can't wait to see you back in the cage. It's going to be a cracker and a packed card in Newcastle. Just before I let you go, mate, just one bit of business. I want to offer you the floor if you want to shout out any sponsors, associates, family, friends, anyone you like for your minutes. It's, it's all yours, my friend. Yeah, um, I would like to shout out my um, my management, BLVK. I'd like to shout out my, my gym, Team Renegade, sponsor, um, Animosity. They've been with me since my amateur. And a few, and, and that's it. Just, I just look forward to showing everyone, and it's been it's been great having all the support around me. Okay. And yeah, that's it. good for you, man. For being assassin, it was best of luck at Bell Tour, and we'll catch up again in, in Newcastle, mate. Thank you. I see you in Newcastle. Uh, hello, welcome to Martial Arts Chat Podcast. Uh, we're continuing with the coverage and build. It's Bellator Newcastle. takes place the 9th of February. Uh, and I'm pleased to say joined at this time by the Dominator, Terry Brazier. Pleasure, sir. How One you doing? One and only. Yeah, how you doing, mate? You right? Absolute pleasure to have you. Thanks for fitness in, man, because I know you're out in Thailand at the moment. And, and before we yeah, get no all the Bellator stuff, but just tell, is it is it Phuket Top Team? Is that where you're at out in, in Thailand? Mate? Yeah, yeah, Phuket Top Team under um, Coach Eric Uresk. How are you enjoying things out there? How's the preparation going? Yeah, great. I'm just um, lighting up the barbecue at the moment. As it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, uh, it's yeah, life could be worse. Uh, I'm just got my day off today, recovery day. Nice. So um, just chilling around the beach and having a barbecue, ready to uh, ready to start the week again tomorrow. That's, that's good stuff, mate. That's the best way to do it. And you were saying you've got you've got your um, your missus and the wee one out with you as well. And do you think that? Yeah, helps? my um, my wife um, and my. 19 month old son's out here yeah so it's all good and my striking coach Kenny Moyston so we're all in a, in a house out here it's all good good vibes yes man is Thailand quite a regular thing for you is this, is this a first or are you out there quite a lot no I've, I've this is probably over 30 times I've been out wow, here now nice, nice, um, this is the longest I've been out here um, I usually bounce backwards and forwards a bit more uh-huh. um, but it does take it out of you the flights and stuff so this time I've done two weeks in December uh-huh. went home for Christmas and then come back out here for a month um, so yeah you know uh, my kid, I've got two kids back home um, you know uh, but they're old enough now to understand that you know I'm, I'm out here for work and, yeah. and this is what I've got to do so you know it, coming out here for a month is not too bad and know with modern technology on facetiming every day and stuff it's not too bad yeah man that keeps it going for sure first time i said i was my friend we were just saying it was back at bama 29 for that well walter gads a fight man so yeah. see when i saw that i was like this boy's hard as nails because you get caught man you get caught a couple of times and then when you got a hold of that boy's yeah. neck you were ripping it off with 30 seconds to go man i was well impressed well impressed you know what um I didn't even know what that choke was. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't even know what that choke was until I actually got it. Um, and um, yeah, do you know what? I actually caught it. Caught somebody in it on Friday as well. So, you know, it might be appearing again. Who knows? There you go. We should, we should name it, man. I think it's meant to be Bulldog or a bit. I think it should be the Brazier. That's it. The Dominator. That's that choke. Get, yeah, that's slap it. Slap your name on that. No, we've, 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 we've got the Dominator. He's there. Um, we've... Um, 
we've got the dominator move that we've already named over right. it. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to let you into it, but <laughs> when, 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 when you see it, I'll let you know about it. Trust there you me. go, man. Make, make an appearance at Newcastle. So just close up, man. Close up on how you got involved in this crazy world of mixed martial arts because you were saying you were, you were in the army, right? Is that what led you into MMA? Or? Yeah, um, uh, I was in the army. Uh, you know, I was a little tie rag growing up looking uh as in a lot of trouble and uh mm-hmm. you know my mum made me promise i'd change my life and you know that's how i ended up in the army a lot of trouble um got off of a court case i was in trouble that i you know uh with the police so right. ended up getting off of a court case and literally joined the army the following day um joined the army uh served uh, with a parachute regiment in afghanistan nice. um got medi- medically discharged uh for ptsd suffering bad oh. depression and stuff um when i got back from tour um, and then being on medical discharge, I sort of found myself at a loose end. Um, I'd split up with my, my first wife, um, and just never had anyone re- really around me and my family were trying to help me, but I was sort of pushing everyone away. So, uh, mm. I walked into a gym to be honest, just let off some steam. I've obviously always been sort of a bit of a, bit of a brute, a bit of a f- fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, so I walked into a gym, NFM Windsor under Dean Amazinger, um, just, just to throw down really, just to have a fight. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Yeah, and do you know what? Uh, I had a interclub fight five days after doing it, and you know I didn't have one bit of skill whatsoever. I literally just, you know, you know, take one to give to, to give yeah. one. Um, yeah. Had an interclub fight, and then as I walked out the cage, Dean Dean um, said, "You know, stick at this, and um, I, I can't teach the heart, but you know, I can teach you everything to go with it, and you'll yeah. go far." And then and then I've trained with him every, every day since. Um, and, you know, Dean, Dean's also helped me through a lot of my other personal stuff, of, uh, you know, obviously dealing with my depression, anxiety and my PTSD. Um, and, you know, we, we've become real good uh, close friends and, and, and he's my coach. And, you know, he brought me up to up to the present date of now fighting on Bellator. Shout out to Dean Amasinga, man. What, what a good guy. Fair yeah. play you, man. You're very, it sounds like you're very open about, uh, you know, you're talking a wee bit about mental health and things like that and PTSD. Yeah. Is that, is that oh, just something you know that's what? always I, been in your life? Um mate? Yeah, no. Just to be honest, um, before before I had a mental illness, um, I, I used to I used to take the piss out of people. To be honest, yeah. Like when I was in the army and people were diagnosed with it, I'd be like, mm-hmm. you know, man, man, the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? What's wrong with you? You know, but it's one of them illnesses because you can't see it. Yeah. You, you, do you know what I mean? It's really hard uh, for people for people that haven't got it or haven't experienced it to understand it. Uh, and you know what? Um, when I ended up with it you know i was a bit like reluctant to tell people and sort of dealing with it in my own head um but i've actually found a way of coping with it and um dealing with it is actually talking about it and you know i do a bit of public speaking and also help other people um you know i was at the 100 year memorial uh for veterans day um and, and done some stuff for that you know um and and the guys around that sort of pushing me into helping and um uh, you know helping charities and, and talking to people and i'm in communication with a lot of people on twitter uh, that are suffering and you know what it's, it's it's a way that i deal with it and and you know if i can help other people along the way then happy days you know yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly what it is man yeah if you're sharing that uh, it's cliche to say a problem shared there's a problem so i sort of going away yeah, to exactly. myself, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. going to help you and it's going to help others around about you yeah that's that's yeah. a good thing man good for you lad um, just because you were mentioning NFM Windsor, obviously, you know, I'm saying Adam's there. Ed Arthur, he's there as well, right? I like, I like we Ed still. I'm sure Ed Arthur. There. Um, yeah, Ed Arthur, he doesn't fight anymore. I uh, decided it just wasn't for him. Um, you know, he had a good innings. Um, as far as it stands now, he's not going to fight again. Um, but, you know, he's still doing his jiu-jitsu and stuff. And, you know, Ed Arthur's a fighter. He's a warrior. Love him, man. Oh, I got know. a chance to meet him in Glasgow. Yeah. He was up here for ACB. What I love his style, man. That's, that's the yeah. same if he's, he's hung man, up gloves. You, 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 can't, you can't switch that off. You can't switch off being a fighter. But, you know, right now in his life, you know, he's got a, a wicked girlfriend around him. He just set up a, um, a really successful business. And, you know, that's what he's concentrating on. So, uh, you know, fair play to him. He's cracking on with that. Um you know, never know. One day he might come back. Oh, I hope so, man. Fingers crossed. But what about you for NFM yeah. Windsor? What's a, what's a typical day like there for you, mate? Um, to be honest, you um, NFM for me is more. See, I, I, I train when I'm in England. I train with De- uh, Dean pretty much every day because uh-huh. we either do our private sessions uh, in the day, um, and then Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays are like uh, classes. So uh, sparring. Um, MMA sparring Tuesdays, wrestling sparring Thursdays, and then small glove sparring on Saturdays. Uh, we do that as a group. Um, and then every other day, I basically do one-on-ones with Dean. Um, mm-hmm. And we bring we bring in like chosen people or selected people that we train with. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, no, it's, it's good. Like I say, things happen back from day one, so that's awesome, man. Um, yeah, it's all good. Loving it. Um, you're, you're running Bama, nothing short of spectacular, mate. Two weight champion, and you, you made that decision yeah. to go from welterweight to lightweight. That, that was a tough battle for Reese McKee. I know Skeletor quite well, but I want to ask you two things here, Terry. Just first, what made you want to go from welterweight to lightweight, and, and how do you feel? Um, because to be honest, I've all, I've wanted to do it for a long time. Obviously, Dean is. Dean does weight cuts. That's what Dean does uh-huh. um, best. And I knew that. And I've always asked him to go lightweight. And he's always said, no, no, no. <laughs> because, I, to be honest, yeah, I wanted to use that advantage of being big and being strong. Sure, and, you know, right. If I could take that to lightweight and yeah. rip through them, then happy days. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's like, at this level, the level I was at, I need to be beating welterweights or middleweights anyway. Um, you know, I don't need that advantage. If, if I need that advantage at that level, then I'm not going to go the whole way. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. So he's like, you know, prove yourself at welterweight. And then you can go lightweight. Um, and then obviously I beat Alex Hoare, who was, you know, everyone was singing his praises, thinking he was like the next best thing out of Europe. Yeah. Uh, and then when I beat him, I was like, look, I've got this title. Can I go, can I go lightweight and fight for the lightweight title? And, he, and Dean said yes. So yeah. that was it really. And like I said, I was only, I only walk around at 82 kilos, 83 it's kilos. Not that, that's so it's not, not extreme, man. It's not massive. You no. know, I'm, I'm, I'm lean, but it's not massive. Um, and then, obviously, following the Reese fight, I I've had seven, I had seven months off just because uh, I had surgery, oh, but yeah. I put on a bit. Uh, obviously, I put on a bit of weight. Uh-huh. Um, so this this time I'm a bit bigger. Um, so I'll be going down. I'm gonna be a lot bigger. You'll notice it. <laughs> <laughs> You're I'm a lot it? bigger. <laughs> I saw the barbecue. Yeah, good. In I feel great. I feel so strong. I feel I feel great. That's good, um, you know, I I can't see Bungard lasting long. Is this, your, is this your home then at Lightweight? Is this where you want to be from, from now on? Oh, this is it. Yeah, this is where yeah. I've signed uh, my Bellator contract as a Lightweight. As a Lightweight, right, I see. Well, let's yeah. get to but, you know, that, be, that, that, that being said, there's a few world weights piping up, um, trying to make a name. Um, but so if they let me fight them, it's easy money. I'll yeah. fight them at World Away. <laughs> <laughs> Good feeling. Well, let's get to Bungard too. We brought him up there in Newcastle. As you can probably tell by my accent, I'm from a Scottish boy. I'm supposed to be in yes, Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. I've known Chris for quite a few years. I've shared the match at the Scottish Hit Squad. But tell us, Terry, what we're in for? What can Bellator fans expect to see come, come fight night, mate? Um, so. Uh, I always go out there to have fun. You watch every every single one of my fights. Yes. Um, if you can call me up on one, I look nervous and I'll be surprised. You know, I've always yeah. got a smile on my face. I'm doing a job that I love um, and I'm getting paid for it. <laughs> I love fighting. <laughs> I'm not getting arrested and I'm getting paid. So happy days. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I've got this far by being a brute um, and using my... Um, I've got fighting's my sort of uh, natural uh, instinct. Like, you know, like you're talking about the, the choke on water. You know, yeah. that's just instinctual. Um, yeah. I go for these sort of things. So now we're trying to develop and evolve me even further uh, and take a fight where I want it to be. So I'm going to be, you know, trying to control the fight where I want to take it rather than just, just trying to win, just trying to beat the guy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, try, I'm going to try some new things out, you know, see what works, see what doesn't. And then, you know... If any of that fails, and I'll just go back to being me. And, <laughs> just and, being hard as nails, and, man, it suits you. Yeah, basically, yeah, just, just worry it out. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it. So I've had a lot of time off yeah. um, through through my injury, and um, I'm just buzzing to get back in there. I can't wait. And oh. Newcastle, where better place? Yeah, They're man. rowdy, all right? Absolutely, <laughs> man, absolutely. How'd you rate him? Do you rate my man Bungie? He's a tough test for you, that's for sure, mate. But how'd you rate uh, Chris Who's that, Bungie? sorry? How'd you rate Chris Bungard? Um... I don't know nothing about him to be honest. Yeah, all I know, I've looked at looked at his show, dog. Yeah, lovely record, fourteen and three or whatever it is. And then, but looked at the people that he's fought, uh, and they, you know, none of them have got spectacular records at all. And you look at my last three fights. I got Walter Gahadza yeah. was sixteen and zero, or sixteen was he sixteen and one or something Just like that. Alex you, the Hall was like Alex the Hall was like fourteen and one. Do you know what I mean? All my guys are progression, all progression fights and pushing. Yeah. Um, and you know, I feel like I've I've been tested and I've and I've, I've, I've been tested and I've been proven, um, and I don't think he has. So you know, this is a big step up for him. Well, I don't see it as a step up for me. I feel like this is a bit more of a comeback warm up fight. Fair I point, intend man. to smash him. <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just to fucking cut a long story short, I'm gonna smash him. <laughs> I can't wait, man. It's gonna be some scrap for sure. Just what you're yeah. saying, Mabella. To what? what I, I hate asking people to look too far ahead, but just maybe what's on the horizon. We're starting 2019 here in Newcastle. Where do you yeah. see yourself? Maybe at the end of the year, that kind of thing. To I, do? I, I'll be honest, with you, I always look ahead. Um, Fair play. 
because, yeah, I don't know. It's just something I always do. I always look two, three fights ahead. Um, um, what you, you know, what you, what you see, what, what, what I see personally comes true. So um, I see beating Bungard. Uh, it's a nice little comeback fight, and then obviously I want a tougher test um, to get me out of this European scene. Whoever they feel like is at the top of the European scene uh, above me, um, I want to fight, and then I want to see myself fighting in America. I want to I want to fight a Benson Henderson, a big name. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to fight a Benson Henderson, someone like that, and prove myself. I feel like I only fight as good as the opponent they've given me. Mm-hmm. If you look at every single one of my fights, they're like, you know, I've been the underdog. The last three fights, I've been three to one in the bookies. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've always risen to the occasion. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep, a ri- I'm going to keep rising to the occasion. And, um, you know, uh, and let's see where it gets me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Let's see how far I can go. Positive mental attitude. Good for you, mate. And I look exactly. forward to, to seeing that race. Terry, a huge thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. No, no worries, man. Before I let you go, just want to offer you the floor here. Give you a chance to shout out sponsors, associate, family, friend. Anyone you like, mate, it's, it's all yours, Terry. Yeah, I just want to shout out my... Do you know what? My, um, my, my coaching team is my family. Eric Curesk over Phuket Top Team. Um... Kenny Moyston, Eddie Cohn, uh, BJJ, East London, um, Russell Abrams, my boxing coach. Obviously, shout out my wife and my family back home, my sister Donna, uh, my brothers. Uh, Ebrit Services are a big sponsor. They're, 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 you know, they're, they're the ones that uh, make all this happen for me and, and, and fund me. So, um, big up Ebrit Services, look them up. Uh, and give him a follow be wicked nice one Terry the Dominic Breezer best luck at Belton we'll catch up again in Newcastle my friend cheers brother take care mate Hello, I'm John Boy McElroy. Welcome to Martial Arts Chat Podcast, continuing the coverage for Belt on Newcastle in this episode. And I'm pleased to say we have returning to the show Wales is on Lewis Long. Lewis, how you doing, sir? Hey, how's it going, guys? Absolute pleasure to have you back on. And like I was saying, man, it really does bring a smile on my face knowing that <laughs> you're on, man. For what you do for a living, mate, I, I mean, like, I hope you don't mind me saying you're so Welsh about things, like, you're almost like nothing bothers you, nothing phases you, mate. You've always been like that. Yeah, I think I think uh, a lot of this stuff here is, is a different approach to it. You know, it's, like, it's it, it, it can it can be some dangerous, and that's why it's so much fun. And the way I look at it is like it's uh, uh, wow, well, it's the most fun you can have without going to jail, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, uh, definitely, mate. <laughs> can you share trouble? Stuck in. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, mate. I was reading the wee bit there just uh, your action, but um, Jimmy had to say Jimmy Hood. We'll get all that in a minute. The trash talk and stuff. Um, but I mean, like, just how how you feel in preparation, training? You, you're saying you're buzzing to get back in the swing of things. How's how's it all going for you, mate? Oh, awesome! You know, it's just uh, yeah. I don't I don't really like generic uh, fighter responses, but you know, like you know, I, I can't fault it. It's been great uh, enjoying it. Yeah, so happy. Happy days, man. Um, I let's get a wee bit of Jimmy Wallard then, because um, what was this thing I was reading? Uh, some, I don't know if this is true. It's gossip, right? But I heard there was something to do with a, 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 what you exchange words about judo, and there like, seems to be a beef that stem, stems from that. Is there any? Is there? Any, is that legit, or what's the story? I from from when? Sorry. Well, I read somewhere that it was like you and Jimmy had a meeting back in the day. You asked him something about judo. How do you think it's oh, helped? Yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. any truth to that? Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because one one day, uh, like on Saturday, I trained. First time in me with like Ricky Wright and one or two others, uh-huh. and then they invited me up to a show called Into the Rough House at Bruno Nottingham, a cage warrior show, and uh, uh-huh. yeah, I still had long hair back then. I was like, eighteen, nineteen, and uh, yeah, I got to speak to people. And of course, his name was uh, Judo Warren. And Aye. I, I after his fight, and I asked him, and he just seemed to, you know, you know, he. Well, I can, I can understand. You know, he just had a fight like he don't want some little twat asking you. Yeah, to help you, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, but you know, it just it just stuck in my mind, you know. Is it is it really like? Uh, does it wind you up for real? No, it doesn't wind me up at all. But it just makes me. Uh, like, oh, I always think like you know you got to give it. I always try and give it everyone the time of day, no matter who they are. Uh, but you know, as I said, it's after a fight, so I'm not. Yeah, you know, it's not like I think he's a dick or anything like that. No, I mean I don't know him. I just that sticks in my mind. And I, I I just you know, as I grew up through the sport, realised he was the same weight division and. All that stuff. So I was like, yeah, that, that'll happen one day. It could happen one day. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, you're right. It's only a matter of time with with uh, top guys like yourself. I just I remember when I first read that, I thought it doesn't sound like Lou. Like he's just so whatever about anything. It doesn't sound like he would. You don't strike me as a kind of guy that's going to get angry about 
whatever life throws at you, mate. You know what I mean? Well, I'm not gonna get angry about that, but you know, you know, I just I wouldn't I wouldn't like to have someone else put off from MMA because of someone else's attitude, sure. if it's like that. Aye. You know, and that's 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 my sort of little take on it. Aye. Uh, and, you know, I'm just. You know, <laughs> and judo's yeah. judo's been like a big part of your life as well, is that right, mate? Uh, as a kid, it was. You know, I used to Aye. love it, but you know, you grow old and realise it's, it's not. Yeah. If you grow old, what's that? You grow old and realise what? You, you grow older and you want to punch things as well. I say I love you, man. You're the best. Um, let's let's look a wee bit. I've actually we we'll probably look a wee bit more at, at Jimmy because I want to just catch up from last time we spoke. It was um, probably no the best. Sorry. Ah, no, you're fine, man. Happy with that? Uh, large. What what the fuck? Check this guy out. Medley of show here, and he's ordering a coffee. Outrageous. Cheers, man. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, man. I can't get a coffee in. I can't find my fucking wallet, though. <laughs> <laughs> get back in the car. Get back in the car. Get back in the car. What's your dog's name, Monty? Monty! <laughs> Come here, you shit. <laughs> this is brilliant. I'm keeping this in the show, man. This is tremendous. What kind of dog you got, mate? Uh, <laughs> he's uh, what's called a golden doodle. A golden doodle? What's that like? Oh, mate, he's so masculine, you wouldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> it's me and this little fluffy animal. You know? Aye, that's like, that one. Like on, a ro- on, on, on the rocky thing, running up mountains. Nice one. Proper, uh, that's proper valley stuff, that, right? That's what you boys train me yeah. up in the mountains, man. Yeah, not a pit bull, but a, <laughs> <laughs> a little fluffy thing. <laughs> nice one, man. Suits you. I definitely suits you. All right, good stuff. I'll let you get your coffee, mate. I'll let you get your coffee, mate. Oh, yeah, I just... Sorry, I, don't, I, I said I'm not being rude, but I am being rude, sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I am committing an offence, you know. You're the man. <laughs> oh, can you put some sugar in there for me? Uh, three. Oh, is that allowed? Three weeks uh, before brown, a fight? It's brown sugar, it's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was sweeteners you boys had. Or sativa, is that the one? Sativa, all that shit. No, I don't like that shit. You, you can have a coffee, you can have coffee, you know. I said, mate, you got to go all out. Brown sugar. Some things, some things in life you can't <laughs> do without, you know. Nice one. Um, I was waiting. We catch up with you. Um, but last much. last time we spoke was because what is eighty seven? I was trying to remember the card. Um, not not an ideal night at the office for yourself, but I mean, you, you bounced back with uh, uh, that. What was it, Sean Lomas? The, the submission win you had not long oh, after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But just, just if you can close up from, I know it's a wee while back, but like from that Cage Warriors to, to last year and then the call up to Bellator, how did, how's the last uh, 12, 18 months been for you, mate? Bit of a whirlwind? Yeah, I mean, they've been a bit, um, a bit crazy, uh, in a good way, in a good way you, know? <coughs> uh-huh. um, you know. Things are always pretty crazy with me, as you, as you can probably imagine. But, you know, um, yeah, just get it, get it in the life sorted, basically. You get everything in track, everything where it needs to be. Um, and now, yeah, it's uh, it was like work hard, live easy, you know. And I, I've, I've been putting in so much work into nearly every area of my life. Nice. Um, and I, you know, just, you know, it's like you say, you work on yourself, you know. And I have I've created my, my you know, um, coaching team. Uh, you know, the, the gym is doing really well. You know, I got my partner in there. In some ways, not my you know, partner. He's my hetero life partner. <laughs> but, uh, business, but I, you know, and things things are going well, and Aye. you know, like, great. You know, yeah, yeah. St- it's sweet. <laughs> Life's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, man. That's yeah, good to hear. Good. I like to hear it, man. I like to hear those kind of things. Yeah. Um, what about uh, Aaron Khalid? How's he doing these days? I've not got a chance to catch up with Aaron. See oh, you. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, he goes out to he goes out to Holland. I think he goes out to the Netherlands. You ever make it out that way, no? What's that? He goes out to the Netherlands. I'm sure he goes out. Um, I don't yeah, know if it's Amsterdam. He goes. He goes out to my gym every now and again. You don't fancy it. You don't fancy a trip out there, no? Uh, as I said, now now I'm in the uh, now I'll be in the position to uh, spend some time away. Aye. But like you know, until you know, having like a fledgling business. Uh, uh, a little puppy dog like I got, you know, my baby. Uh, you know, just said, just bl- I, I, you know, knuckle down Aye. and get get things done. And now I can look to maybe go away training and you know, good maybe join Aaron in the Netherlands. Aye. You don't make coffee, you motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you always make. He's like, I can't make coffee and hands. Ah, no, trying to make. Obviously, more addicted to caffeine than anyone. You don't fancy the green uh, tea? I thought for you, I said green tea. <laughs> No. no. <laughs> Come on now. I quite like a green tea, but a wee bit of lemon. No, you don't fancy that. Yeah. 
Is there a time of the month? Does that? <laughs> that my cranberry juice. That's it. Do you want me with a bath? <laughs> yeah, exactly, mate. I need my I need my chill out time after that. Happy days, <laughs> man. Well, let's talk a wee bit because I mentioned it just off here there about the Polaris and that picture, man. I love that where you're smiling away, you're in full flow. How did you enjoy? How did you enjoy that experience, mate? Oh, mate, it's fucking great fun, and I really hope they have me back. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Aye, it's good to get you. Good to see you in the gap on side of things. But um, was was that what you were doing in preparation for that? Were you just were you just all out MMA or? I bet I just you know obviously do more grappling because we've got something coming up. But you know you never you never stop doing it all. Aye, aye. You know, so yeah, it was great. Nice, nice to have something to focus on and. And uh, yeah, make it be a worthwhile, like you know. Absolutely, mate. Um, we mentioned judo being a, a part of your life from early days, and judo Jimmy Wallhead. Um, just just give me your thoughts on you know his skills. I'm sure you probably had a chance to see him fight. Like, what, what, how do you how do you rate uh, Jimmy Wallhead? How do I rate him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, really good. I mean, uh, he's got power. Eh? He seems a bit static on the on the show on his feet, but you know he's be- he's be- he's be beating some fucking big names like. Aye, aye. You know, I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of respect for him. Like, you know, he's had a hell of a lot of fights, and uh, you know, just um, it's what it's about, isn't it? Yeah, man. This is um, because you're a guy who sends your stripes, man. I think when we heard about all the European fighters get called up, yours, yours was one of the the first names mentioned, and I, I think a lot of us in the kind of UK MMA scene were like, oh yes, finally Lewis getting some. I don't want to sound cheesy, man, but you were getting what you deserved. You're getting some big recognition and. And that yeah. goes hand in hand with like the, the the signing for Bellator. Is that is that the plan here? Just get get big name, big name fights, and test yourself as much as you can in this promotion. Um, I mean, I regard myself as a martial artist, and if if I didn't enjoy doing it and I didn't enjoy like bettering myself, I mean, uh, it's what it's about. And like, now, I, yeah, you know, I just want to challenge myself, see where I'm at. And um, I, I, like personally, I still believe my best performance is still yet to come. No. And, uh, yeah, I fucking yeah, just just, just do it like. I, as I said, I want to fight again this month. You know, hopefully, I get a fucking on the island card. Not overlooking Jimmy Wallet, but you know, I'm I'm just feeling that focus. Like, get me out, get me back in there. Yeah, yeah. I feel, feel happy doing it. I feel you know, most at home. <laughs> yeah, man. It sounds like you're hungry for it, and, and it's going to be a cracking contest for sure. Hey, what's this? I read. Oh, yeah, yeah. I read somewhere that you want to smack Dylan Dennis about. Is this true? Um, no. It, 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 What's that? Said, it wasn't said like that. I don't, Go on. I don't know him. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't say I smack anyone around. <laughs> I'm not, I, no, I just, I just find it funny that you know, a guy that levels in Bellator and stuff, you know, and he, um, he might be alright at grappling, but I mean, when you start, <clears throat> what I think, what I said was, it'd be funny to smack him about, like, he'd be like whack a mole, because <laughs> <laughs> you know, he'd be, he'd be rolling on the floor yeah. looking for you, looking for animals, and yeah. you just go. <laughs> that, 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 that was in which the context it was, you know. Fair enough. More than, uh, more than I'm gonna fucking kill them. Lie, because I was yeah. again when I'm when I'm reading that, I'm like, that's not something. That doesn't sound like. Yeah, it's, no, it, I just I just find the idea of him, you know, as whack a mole quite funny, and obviously, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I cards uh, a couple of days after, and you know, people seem to love him for whatever reason. Aye, and, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, why not? Why not try to take a bit of publicity for myself? Absolutely, man. I mean, I, I don't know how you feel about that, but you know, we've got uh, Aaron Chalmers in this card, and some Peter's going to hate whatever, man. But um, how do you feel about like someone like that coming into MMA, getting getting a push early? I think it's just. I think it's fucking awesome. I, I, I don't think it's a bad thing at all, mate. I mean, like you know, you know, what? I, I don't know him. I can't say anything for him, but you know. If you know he does, if he's been in those crowds, he doesn't need to be fighting. Well, he does I, it because he, he, he enjoys it. Aye, that's it. And then, like you know, other fighters want to get a bit of recognition, so they offer him out. And it's like I think, I think realistically, he's for people relative to his experience. Yes, you know, and he's, uh, he's, he's looked good. Fair play to him. Aye, the matchmaking's been smart, but aye, he's not looked out of sorts with who he's been matched with, right? So. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Not, I mean, you know, he is a cash cow. He is, you know, you're stupid not to think that. But you know, he's he's, he's still testing himself. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's outside eyes though as well. I mean, like you put him on a card, people that not necessarily from MMA world get to see that. They get to see you and Jimmy go at it. Do you know what I mean? There's other guys that there's more yeah, eyes on you. A million times. I know that. I can hear it, man. You're probably sick of being asked about it. To be honest with you, I know, no, I know no, I hear no. It. About fucking scope being higher on the card than me. Oh, is that right? I didn't even know the order. Right. Okay. But does that even bother yeah, you? I, I th- 
because it's I don't know fuck it I don't bother me All right. it's but like a scope versus that pit bull but like uh, I just gotta laugh about it because even when they're talking about the fight they've had this, they've got some way in pay recognition to me right <laughs> <laughs> so you're the main event that's what you're saying right so yeah, you're the main event <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but they're gonna have to talk about me at some point. <laughs> <All right. laughs> That's it, man. Quite right. Um, I was mentioned, we touched on it a wee bit there. And I, I hate asking this question, but after Jimmy, right? If you get the W, I know you mentioned Ireland there, but we're at the start of a new year, 2019. Where do you see yourself at the end of the year, Lulu? Oh, fuck those ways. Just happy, bouncing around, smiling, right. and, uh, and still just trying to be better, you know. No, it's a true martial artist, mate. Uh, yeah, Jen, thanks for fitting me in again. Um, just one more bit of business before I let you go, mate. Um, just want to give you the floor here if you want to shout out sponsors or teammates, associates, um, maybe your dog as well. Anyone you like, mate, it's all yours. Um, yeah, you know, I got some great sponsors and uh, I've you know, posted up continuously about them now. But a uh, big shout out to Wayne Samways and everyone at the Mac Academy, really. You know, they all help me out. It's all good. Should be up stuff. Louis Long, thank you again for your time, sir. I'll be down in Newcastle for Bellator, so maybe we'll get a wee catch up um, post ah, fight, sir. Good stuff, good stuff no worries, man. Buddy, have a good day. Thanks very much, man. Enjoy that coffee. Hello, <laughs> well, welcome to Martial Arts Podcast. We're continuing with the coverage. Build at Bellator Newcastle takes place on the 9th. I'm pleased to say we have returning to the show. Always welcome, Get Squad Brother, Get the Bad Guy Bunger. Chris, how you doing, mate? How we doing, John, my man? It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Oh man, we've, we've come a long way, mate. Bellator, oh, big time. I know. I know, it's only been a nine-year journey, you know what I mean? So, but uh, it's a journey that I wouldn't change, not one minute yet, so... The ups, the downs, the sideways. Uh, it's just a journey, isn't it? It's, it's like anything else in life, but uh, we're only like three and a half weeks out, so... Um, aye, it's, it's a business end, so we call it the business end. <laughs> You've been doing all of that? You've been doing uh, lots of people videoing you and eyes on you and probably used to that, I suppose, but is it different because it's Bellator, is it? Oh, it's, it's definitely different. It's been up. Um, I'm, I'm starting to think that I need to bring in like, a fucking an assistant or a PR team or something like that. Somebody <laughs> keep me in check, man. Like, you need to be here at this time and go and see this person and I forget about this person and it's like, I've got so much shit today. I need to train, I need to go to radio stations, fucking interviews here. And, but it's all part and parcel of the game. Like, it's like if you want to be a, a big fighter and a big organisation and well known, like, you know, these are the sacrifices you need to do. And I, I like doing them, don't get me wrong, I like doing all the media stuff, but I like when somebody throws me a question I've never I've never heard, you know what I mean? Because it's usually the, the same questions you always get leading up to a fight. No doubt, it's like how's training going and how's the weight cut. Uh, you just uh, get you a bit numb to it, don't you? Yeah, um, no shit. Yeah, you probably been asked this one before, but I need to ask it anyway because it's it's just <laughs> yeah. to clue me, clue the listeners up. I guess how did Bellator get in touch? How did it all go down, mate? Um, I was just um, fuck. It was a good few months ago now, but it was just after not long after my last fight, which was in fucking June. That's so long ago, but I uh, we were just like weighing up options. We had a few few contracts waiting, like. I had a cage warriors one sitting in front of me, a five a five fight deal, and me and my coach thought that's what we we're going to do. Like we were in a rush to to sign it because that was what we were heading for. And then I was I was working in Cambridge down in London on a film set, and uh, my coach Brian Garker just phoned me like, uh, "My Bellator's come in with an offer. It's fucking a great offer." Uh, and it wasn't it wasn't even a hard hard decision for me. Um, Money aside and all that, like obviously, like Cage Warrior has has that link to the UFC now. But um, Bellator's a huge, huge promotion, one of the biggest ever. Uh, so yeah, it was a no-brainer for me. It's I think I'm suited to Bellator. I like I like their fighters, their shows, big arenas. I like that big walkout ramp. That's like that's got my that's <laughs> yeah. got my name that's got my name written on it. Like, oh, aye. Aye. You're, you're a man who makes an entrance and that's all aye, selfie, aye. isn't it? I could see me swagger down there, <laughs> fin- finishing a guy, then just leaving the cage without anybody to tell me and I way back up my van. <laughs> Gain everybody the middle finger, getting spat on and booed, then just walking away with my Scottish flag. That's it, mate, buzzing. I, actually, I remember a week off because we all knew something was going to go down. We didn't know what it was. Um, and then when I got announced, man, we were all buzzing for you. It was just like, ah, finally, Bungie's getting with... In like... 
you, you probably felt the love as well, Fiona. It was like, uh, big time. Uh, it's madness, but uh, I like all. I see all the messages. I did, I did get a lot, but I, I, I actually go through every single one. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll reply to everybody. You know what I mean? If they take the time out to to send me a, a good luck message or a, like they're happy for me or like I'm an inspiration, like that means a lot. So I'll always get back to them. But uh, hi, man, it's it's good. But as I was ages ago, and now we're finally here. We've finally got a fight. So it's it's time to really put the work in. You know what I mean? I mean, it was a long time because when I first, when we first uh, got chatting, you would, you were fighting like four or five times a year, and that's a long time. No, even an injury. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, how how do you deal with that? Uh, I, I didn't like it at all. Um, I, I felt like I was injured. <laughs> that's how bad it was. Like, uh, I think it's been seven, eight months or whatever. Since long time for you, mate. Uh, yeah, like four or five a year. When I was an amateur, it was five and pro. I done four and five a year, but. Aye, but obviously I've still been in the gym helping my teammates prepare and obviously every day I'm learning anyway, so it could it could be a blessing. Um obviously my opponent Terry, he's he's not fought in a way wider, so um I we'll see we'll see how it goes down. Let's get to Terry because I've got a back and forth for you guys and social Battle of Britain in it, Battle of Britain not talking. What's, uh, uh, what's the crack? <laughs> what's the what's the trash talk? What's it like, mate? It's no trash talk. I just I, I just tell what I, what I think on what's on my mind and what I think is the truth. So, um, I would, when you sign, you get a contract to sign Terry Brazier. You know, you're not signing for an easy night. No, I mean I'm a fucking I'm a I'm a realist. Um, but if I didn't think I couldn't win this fight, I wouldn't sign the fight. And if I didn't think I could beat anybody, then I wouldn't be a fighter. So I know what he brings. He's strong, good forward uh, forward pressure. Shite stand up, like he throws, <laughs> he throws, he throws, he throws like when he brings his hand back, it's got snow on it. It's got that fucking, that's how far he's setting it up. So it's just to set up the clinch and take down. Very amateur striker, but tough, comes forward, push against the cage, good takedowns against the cage, heavy on top, good, good sprawl and head, head and arm control. So he's easy to prepare for. <laughs> so just, <laughs> if you know that that's what he's got to bring, you just need to get yourself in. The best shape possible to go three hard rounds and uh, and drill at what he's good at. Drill, 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 drill. So he's the easiest guy to prepare for, um, and it's got to come down to. I, I know I'm going to be in some bad spots at certain times unless I have a perfect fight, but nobody has a perfect fight ever. Of course, uh, so it's all down to. If I'm in the bottom, if I'm against the cage, how how bad do I want this fight? How bad do I want to beat this guy? How bad do I want to win this match? So. Then that's where you'll see the real bunga, the real toughness coming out. And who's tougher, me or Terry? Terry's tough. I'm tough. Um, but let's see. Let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. If you to see my face right now, I've got a smile on my face. And that's no <laughs> pe- people that are uh, are scared and, and uh, or worried about fighting don't have fi- smiles on their face. So I'm, ex- excite- I'm excited, man. Maybe it's because I'm a bit psych- psychotic in the brain, but. <laughs> Insane just, in the membrane, brother. Man. That's you, man. That's, that's it, you man. all over. I mean, I he is tough. Watching the Obama fights, man. That that one where who was at Walter Gahadza and he was getting he was getting like you're saying, man. The stand up, he was getting caught, and he yeah. just toughed it out, man. He's he's a bit of fighter, but I mean, you got to talk toughness when you talk. Sco- I'm no blowing smoke up your ass, mate. But you think a squad fighter isn't tough? It's you're the first guy. He's top of the page. Aye, you know what I mean? I'm so a, I'm the toughest in the room. Every room I walk into, I look about. I'm saying, right, I'm tough on all these guys. Just I don't know what it is. I think it's my. I think that's my best, my best attribute is my t- mental toughness. Like I've been through some shit, some tough fights, some tough weight cuts. I just know I'm mentally stronger than anybody. Obviously, Jarhead's been in the army and the parachute out a few planes and that, but there's nothing compared to me and Tappy trying to cave your skull in with big nasty, nasty elbows. You know what I mean? We, we upside down face. We turn to dominatrix. He, he's like, <laughs> honestly, I think he's about to tie him up and just dry hump me. He's so fucking boring. It's unbelievable. Like these, these last fighters he's fought have been brilliant. Like McKee's good, Hoare's good, and Gads is good. But they're all strikers. They don't attack like I attack. They've not got the grind like I've got. Like they don't dive on legs. They don't dive on flying submissions. I bring something totally different than all these fighters. Although every one of them are exceptional fighters. So. He's, he's in for a he's in for a fright if he thinks he's got to walk through me. Nobody's ever walked through me, and uh, I can't wait till he feels the first exchange, a clinch, or 
on my first elbow going off his wee shiny bald temple. <laughs> the, be- the, the, the best illustration I saw of Chris Bungard and toughness and determination was, it was actually in a losing effort, but it was your fight with, uh, although it was, you could argue it could have gone either way with, with Fletcher, Colin Fletcher, because, I mean, usually when he, he snaps at Darcy and it's over for most folk, and you, yeah. were, you, were, you were determined, man, you were not getting caught in that, and then you were coming out with fucking flying kicks in the third round and all sorts, man, and it's just yeah. a testament well, that's- to you, mate. That's when you needed. That's when you needed deep. Like that was Colin's hometown. I think he stayed mm-hmm. round the round the corner. Yep. His dad was on the, the fucking bar, working in the bar. I think his cousins were the, the judges, but I won't go there. <laughs> uh, so I was willing to go there and fight him in his back garden. I'm willing to go to te- England and fight Terry. But um, I like Terry's no good. Like good submissions. Well, probably us, but like Darcy's like that. So he, I don't think I've got any fear of like his ground game. I don't think he's got to submit me. The only fear I get is him just lying on top of me, boring me if I get tired. I was going to share a wee bit of information with you just because I was speaking to Terry the other day and he was telling me that he's got a finishing move called the Dominator, but he's not telling me what it is. You were talking about submissions, yeah. Dominator, that's his All right. Uh, so it's me like he's got to get a gag ball out and talk. <laughs> the Dominator, I don't know that fucking... <laughs> uh, he'll, get, he'll get pimp smacked. I'm going to put talcum powder on my hand and slap him and Alan Chalmers at this press conference and they're going to do nothing about it. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll pull his parachute and he'll shoot into another room then I'll deal with Chalmers until he comes back. Uh, well, let's get to Chalmers because there's back and forth with you. see your fight, man. Everything else can mate. Oh, trust me. See, when I got up in that press conference, there's going to be six lightweights and every one of them are going to get a verbal <laughs> beat, beat down. Even the wee Tennessee guy that Chalmers is fighting, I mean... That guy's not even got social media. What is he doing in Tennessee apart from eating straws and maybe shagging his cousin? <laughs> no, I mean, he's four and two. Four and two at what? Fighting his fucking uncles half with semis. <laughs> Dude, uh, does that piss you off? Because, like, Chalmers, man, look at a couple of guys in the card, but Chalmers, right? I get it, right? I get why he's on the card. He's to bring outside eyes and he gets guys with questionable records and skills, whatever. But I look at you, Chris. 30 odd fights over amateur and pro, and now it's just here at Bellator. The guy gets in the door right away. Does it piss you off? No, it doesn't piss me off because uh, I respect that he brings something to the table. If he can sell out that arena, then fucking, here we go, money's in, you know what I mean? Aye. Business. But the way he acts like he's a world beater, as if he's, the guys are me throwing fights and he's beating everybody and they're good fighters when they're not. So then he's putting up pictures with the money, the fight game, and all that annoyed me. And then obviously we're just annoying. Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess outside eyes. I guess more people, possibly more people, are going to watch a Chris Bunger fight because he's on the card. I guess, and that's not a bad thing, is it? No, it's a fuck. Uh, <laughs> but but the press conference is going to be fun. I can't wait for that, man. That's going to be amazing. I remember when I started this podcast. It was a couple of years ago, and I was interviewing Paul. And uh, actually, I think I'd no longer started uh, Jets the Scottish Hit Squad. And your name always came up, all oh, Bungie, like bad guy Bungard. I thought you were Paul's brother or something. I had no idea. I just saw these two big <laughs> cunts with beards bat on each other, man. I didn't know it. <laughs> but that was back in the day, man. That was back in the day when you were what power bombing folk at jiu-jitsu competitions, and and here we are now, man. It's a it's a long time coming for you. Do you think? Do you feel like this opportunity should have came sooner? Or are you just happy that it's happening now, mate? Um, I'm just just enjoying the, the now. I'm enjoying it. I'm not wide well on or what could have been because I'm still. I just don't say it uh, last week, so. So I've still got like, Daniel Cormier still fighting at about 42 or so. <laughs> man, there you go. He's a benchmark. <laughs> uh, uh, so I think I'm, I'm just getting in. I'm just peaking because I'm getting better every Every day I'm getting better. Every day I'm getting better. So it's just the right time to peak when I'm just then on the big stage, you know what I mean? And what way to date than fighting a two-weight world champion. Absolutely, mate. Tell us a wee bit about Bad Patter in the podcast to you do with James. Tell us a wee bit about that, mate. Oh, wait. We started, um, um, so I mean, James have started uh, our own podcast called The Bad Part of the <laughs> I want a podcast, so somebody's started talking to me. Just my teammate Nicky annoying me. <laughs> um, so for I, single I like. mean, <laughs> me and James have started uh, about The Bad Part of the Podcast. Um, we're like four episodes in. Uh, well, actually, I need to get you on. Um, but I, so just something different. James just asked me to do it and. I thought he was asking me to come on a podcast. I like, know what do you think about do, doing one of us two like co-hosts at that. Ah, why well, no, man? I'm trying to dip my my feet into other things now anyway. So just just get, gets me better on the mic for maybe other things in the future. Wink, wink. 
There you go. That's it. Uh, so I plus we get different guests in. They're different and they're different uh, sports and they're they're different fields. So we're gonna try to mix up more just with fighters, with comedians and stuff. Like, aye. Uh, comedians, wrestlers, actors, singers, um, stuff like that. So I am enjoying it. It's good. It's been a good laugh. We've had a couple of good guests to start it off, but uh, hopefully kicks on and. Uh, the people like it. The numbers are alright to know, so who wants to listen to me for a new bit? No, I mean, that's like the podcasts are a bit long, that's the only thing I don't like. But if it, they're in work, they can fire it on iTunes and just Aye. fire away or get it running or whatever. Not me. But that's usually who I, I, I'm listening to it and I, folk are listening to this show. It's usually the I, they've got it on the train or they've got it on the drive to work or on the treadmill or whatever. Aye, it, it's, 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 it's decent chat and it's a good wee show, man. I urge anyone listening to check it out. But I need to get the important stuff now, right? The zombies, the zombies have battered us one now recently. Is it, time <laughs> to get, is it time to get worried, mate? Is it the apocalypse or what? Um, I wouldn't say it's time to get worried. Um, it's time to invest in new players, I think, for yes. Celtic. But... You know, these guys are all moaning, like, oh, one bad game, right? Brown's, that's Brown. She's done, and the manager's done this and that. We're forgetting it with just won seven out of seven trophies, you know what I mean? We're still top of the league. We're still in Europe. It's, it's madness. Um, Celtic fans demand so much when you're winning and everything. It's the expectation's so high. Been, must be so much pressure being a Celtic player. Um, but even when I'm at Celtic Park, like, one bad pass and the whole stadium's on the people's back. <laughs> yeah. I think the nation need to calm down a wee bit. See what signings we have and uh, just we'll see who wins the league at the end of the season. Obviously, there's big improvements with Rangers through Gerrard. And, but they're still shite. <laughs> they're still, they're, 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 I've watched them. Obviously, they Brutal. were up for it against Celtic, but they're re- really bad when I watched them uh, the, the couple of weeks before then. But... They were just up for it. Celtic, Celtic were terrible. No doubts about it. But I think he's still here for ten in a row, though. That's... I don't know. I don't know. Like, see, see when you complete the Scottish League three times in a row. Aye. Like, what more is there, right? That's aye, what is it? He's, he's been to the Champions League twice. Uh, been, been past Europa after Christmas twice. Um, so I like they probably just get annoyed with the media and all these fans attacking him. He's like, fuck this, I'm off. I've won, I've won nine out of nine trophies. Not I mean, well, well, uh, today, but I'd, I'd love him to stay for ten. Obviously, not me. Definitely, me. I same. As mu- and also, as much as it's nice to uh, get him a doing all the time, sometimes it's nice to see a wee bit competitive. Obviously, not too I, much. But, aye. Well, we've just been hammering them five ones home and away, four nothings, five nothings. Not me. So we'll we'll give them that wee one nothing. <laughs> we'll give them that wee one nothing. Not me. We've still got a game in hand. We're still top of the league as well. So. They've got a couple of hard games coming up away and we've got a couple of easier ones coming up so we'll, we'll see if that gap spreads up my wee bit. Well, Bungie, always a pleasure. I, I feel like I've been on this journey with you, mate, if you don't mind me saying. Like, no, we have, man. We're all in it together. Bob McIntosh, that was the first time I interviewed you, man. That was that was uh, your first time I saw you. And, uh, was it really? That was a lie. Was that? No, was no, really? I tell you, the first time I saw you, fate was when you power bombed that guy in the jiu jitsu. <laughs> I know. What a, that was like the fucking Montreal screw job. <laughs> I, 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 I call it the Ravens Craig screw job. The Ravens, that's it, <laughs> But I mean, my hey. journey, man. Flying triangles, fight the near with future. But, you're always there to help. That's any of the boys out here at all. Oh, cheers, John. You're a legend. I appreciate your time. Just one, always, one more bit of business for a while to go, mate. Just shout out any sponsors, aye, family, wrong. friends, anyone you want, mate. Just shout them out. It's all yours. Uh, aye. Um, thanks to Hellcats Graphics, Taste Buds, Avosia Coven. In fact, Taste Buds is now called uh, Prepped and Fresh. <laughs> so, <laughs> change up. Um, and you security. Oh, I'm actually got any old kid in the gym now. Look at my sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Omar's Premier, um, Conroy Daniels, who's my physio. Um, I think that's it. Oh shit, sorry, bro. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that's it. My teammates at Scottish Shirt Squad, Brian Garker, my main coach. Um, he's been through everything with me. And um, just pe- everybody, like, I'm going to Dublin on Monday to train. Even my training partners over there. And, um, John for always John for always having me over there no problem in that so awesome stuff Chris bye guy bungled all the best mate we'll catch up in the match thank you very much have, John, a, good mate. have a good day hello welcome to Martial Arts Chat Podcast we're continuing with the coverage and build Bellator Newcastle it takes place uh, the 9th of February I'm pleased to say we have returning to the show Liverpool's greatest son Lee the Butcher Chadwick Lee how you doing sir 
I'm good, thank you very much. An absolute pleasure, mate. We'll, we'll maybe just get this part out of the way first, at least 2018, because is it fair to say maybe a year to forget in terms of, of MMA for yourself, mate? Yeah, yeah, I didn't get nothing in in 2018, which is disappointing, but um, this year is going to be a lot different. I'm looking forward to, to, to see, because the guy, I, I was when I first started covering you and your fights, um, ACP Glasgow, and, but it was just after that, you had a 2017 was phenomenal for you, mate, with that, you know, when you choked out Tommy Quinn, obviously, and, the, and oh, everything yeah. about getting a title and all that, and, and that's the boy I'm, I'm, I'm looking to see getting back in the cage. How are you feeling? Are you feeling like... Bit, bit like uh, back back to your old self maybe is that, is that oh nice? yeah definitely definitely that was just um, another one of the rocks in the road for me um, but when I'm on form um, I, when when I'm right in, in the mind uh, I feel indestructible so um, I, I'm feeling good I'm feeling very good and how's the training and things like that been in the preparation how you how you getting the rounds in Training's going great. I mean, I can do, I can do a, I can do a championship fight every day. My fitness is always there because I work hard every day. Um, it's more about um, prepping and strategy and stuff like that when it's coming up to fights. But Aye. other than that, I'm fit all year round because I, I live and breathe MMA. Aye, man. Anyway, I know you boys. I mean, I'm purely just jujitsu myself, but I know you MMA boys. There's always injuries. There's always something you're carrying. And last year you had that pretty devastating the injury man is it is it yeah is it just one of these things you just you, you know there'll always be a bit of scar tissue remaining or are you just you just got out or do you feel how do you feel for it um do you know what it's it's one of those things once you injure something it's never 100 percent, is it Aye. but you learn to work around it as you boys know all in, ju- in jiu-jitsu if you've got a if you've got a bad arm you use one arm and two legs if you've so, got a bad leg you use two arms and one leg it's the same nobody un- unless you're fresh i mean i can see I-, I could imagine fabian to go into the fight fresh no injuries because he's only been doing it three years yeah. and he's catapulted right up onto bellator hasn't he so Aye. but obviously um um, that, that that there's going to be a difference in conditioning as well, fight conditioning. See, right. my my uh, I've had bone density tests and everything, and right. like my bone density is off the scale when I went to university above rugby players and stuff like that. Like I've been oh. in a hundred. He said he said it's like I've been in a hundred car crashes. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> who's that for so, a badge of honour? Eh? Holy moly! Yeah, so so Fabian's like because uh, because like everyone he fights. Um, walk so um, it's like it, it looks like they're scared of them from the start you know what I mean and the, the, he's just not going to get that from me so I, he thinks he is but he just isn't so, um, I, I'm not scared of getting it and he thinks I'm going to be a tough guy and just stand there and take shots I'm not going to stand there and take shots I'm going to slip and I'm going to bang him hard I, I've got time and I've got skill, I've got skill and I've got time and but not only that I'm, I, I've got got the experience to be a step ahead. Well, you've certainly got that, mate. I and without a doubt, you, you've got you've got all the power in the world. I've seen that plenty of times. He's quite a cocky young guy. I had him on the, on the show the other day. He calls it confidence, man, and and, and he, lo- he looks tidy. I guess that's what makes for an interesting contest. But we've already yeah. seen we were mentioning a wee bit. Um, we've, there's been interviews with yourselves and a bit. Of, Bit of banter, shall we say, back and forth. What's your what's your thoughts yeah, on, on, on Fabian, man? Yeah, he's, 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 got, he's, got, he's got a big mouth and um, it, it does make a good fight, which is good. We're on the main card on Bellator and I yeah. believe that's down to his mouth and my credentials because he's only had five pro fights. I know he's had ten amateur, but they don't count once you turn pro. It's a different story. Yeah. Um, and he hasn't he hasn't been tested yet. He's a, like he's, he's even said that he's fought on Bellator before, but the guy he fought was 2-0. And a bit, it, it was a light heavyweight, a big guy, but he knocked him out with a flying knee. Aye. Um, but he was only two and up. It's like Jesus Christ, you're raving about knocking out two and old fighters. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've knocked out, I've knocked out people just before they got, like not long before they got in the UFC and stuff yeah. like that. I've knocked out proper men. I've knocked out people that don't get knocked out. So um, I don't know. It's 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 interesting to see what he's going to bring to the table because I'm um, it's going to take a hell of a man to get me out of that cage losing. You see that as a biggest difference, Lee. Like the, you had mentioned, the, I mean, you've been around the block twice and back. Is the, is the experience just what what makes you the victor here in this fight? Um, yeah, experience and skill and years and years of working hard and Aye. like my my natural. I mean, when you're tired, it, it all comes down to. Um, 
it comes down to what comes natural when you fight. So it's easy to have plans in your head and set up your shots and, and set up everything and all that. But when you're absolutely exhausted, the adrenaline's took over, nerves have took over, and you've got your, your, your life, you're like, you're running on autopilot. The autopilot is what you've been drilling and drilling for years and years in the gym. Yeah. Now I've got all those skills that are natural to me now. So all, all the only new things to me is pair fighter get a different type of strategy and game plan. But um, I always say I don't come in with a specific game plan. I work um, work to my opponent's weaknesses. But apart from that, wherever the fight goes, I'm happy standing on the ground, wrestling against the cage, in the middle, whatever it takes. Yeah, you're comfortable everywhere, and that's what makes you the, yeah. the complete fighter. I mean, it's going to be a cracking contest, man. I can't wait to see your boys throw down, but a wee bit off topic, mate. A few weeks ago, just came to mind there, I dropped up an interview as an old four years uh, at Niles Vinod. He competes now in, uh, in heavyweight. Nils Van Nord? Yeah, man, the, the caveman, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I fought him twice, didn't I? He was telling me he was looking to get another one with you because uh, you guys won in one, right? Is that is that how it went down? He's got one, you've got one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The first, yeah, the first fight it was when I just started for uh, SW, right. and um, um, it was it was a grueling fight. The first one, um, and yeah, it was a grueling fight, and he come out on top because he kept taking me down and like keeping top position and stuff like that, and nearly knocked him out a couple of times, nice. and he won on points, and then I fought him for the world title then. In this uh, on Omach, um, the second time, and um, to to be honest, because I'd I'd only been with ASW a few months when I first fought him, right. then I'd been with ASW about two and a half years when I fought him next, and um, I was just too good for him. He's so and now, man, he's fucking huge. Jesus. Oh, he's a big guy. He's a big guy, but he he, he doesn't want to fight me again because I'm even better. <laughs> that was that, that, that was like that was like must have been. That must have been about seven years ago or Aye. something. Well, I think he's up yeah. heavyweight now anyway, which makes sense, man. But uh, you fancy that? You fancy a trilogy fight with a caveman? He'd have to get on Bellator, wouldn't he, to do that? He'd have to get on Bellator, but I'd, 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 I'd fight anyone. Yeah, Certainly. of course. Super. <laughs> I'm just having a wee social on your, no, uh, your social media here. What's this? Um, it's, it says heat camps. It looks like a kind of sauna, bouncy castle looking thing. What's that, mate? <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's massive and it's beautiful, and it's um, it's basically a blo- It is like half a bouncy castle without right. the the floor. Do you know what I mean? So it blows up, and then there's heaters inside. There's a trainer inside who's my brother, and um, with a microphone system on, and um, twenty people per class, um, online booking system, and they come and need to do kettlebells, weights, what? circuit training, all inside in the heat. And um, yeah, me me brother went bust. Um, last year um, and we hadn't spoke for years and then when we spoke I said to him how do you feel about um, getting a going again and he went I'd love to so I backed him on it helped him set it up um, and it's we've got a going again so it launches next week oh man super well, we'll definitely put that out and help you spread the love mate is it something you're using as part of your, your training for this fight mate um, personally, no, um, no. I've got all my um, training set up with me coach and stuff like that. Um, I don't need to train in heat because I train hard enough. Um, I, see, the heat is the heat. The, the heat are tend to better because you you work hard in them. Don't get me wrong, but you don't have to work as hard to lose as much weight. Do you know what I mean? The heat's already but, there, right? Yeah, so okay. it's something that I could use like. A week, a couple of weeks out to get me weight off, uh-huh. water weight and uh-huh. stuff like that. But as for fitness and stuff like that, I prefer to train outside of it. Super, mate. And uh, we were speaking a wee bit of uh, you celebrated uh, celebrated a birthday uh, recently as well, mate, as well as an engagement. It sounds like uh, running about Christmas time's been nice and treating you well, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was my birthday on the 9th of January, yeah. Yeah, it's not great growing up when you don't get as many presents. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, man. We celebrate the engagement with me as well, mate. Congratulations. Um, doing Thank the you. Right thing, mate. You, put, you put a ring on it. How's, um, how's the family been all right? Yeah, everyone's good, mate. Everyone's good. I hope these good times continue for you. And like I said, man, when, when I started covering your face, the monster of this man, Butcher, like, just running through. But the Tommy Quinn one's the one that always sticks out, man. But 2017, I was like, oh, that's a boy for me. And uh, yeah. I, I want to see that boy back in the cage, especially Bellator, mate. So I hope, hope a good times continue for you, Lee. Yeah, thank you very much. Just one more bit of business before I let you go. I just want to offer you the floor here. Um, if you want to shout out any sponsors or associates or family and friends or anything like that, mate, it's it's all yours. I'll give you the floor, pal. 
Yeah, that's great. I'd like to thank uh, first of all me um, me coach at ASW, Darren Morris. He's the head coach, and he's just amazing the work he's done with me and where he's got me to. He's the he's the reason for be he's the man behind all my titles and all my wins and um, where I am today, which is amazing. Uh, so I thank him and the team at ASW for working hard with me um, and he- heavy duty fight management for getting the Bellator contract for me and signing me up and looking after me they've been brilliant Concussion Pro is part of heavy duty as well they um, supply me with the supplements for to stop to, to if you get like concussed or something like that just to protect your brain it's a brain protector nice um, which is good to have in the sport yeah, <laughs> um, PNI supplements who have been there from the beginning 12 years ago and they still sponsor me give me my supplements or anything I need for free and my advice on supplements and stuff like that Um, also heat camps man and my brother's business Um, yeah what else I'd like to shout out to Kids in Bloom Nursery who support me for my fights Um, protect cctv.com um Sorry about this, but it goes on. <laughs> You've just so much uh, to love me. Do you know what? I forgot to put all my sponsors on, but I'm actually wearing to chill now. Luciano Fashion, um, who supply me with um, nice going out socks and stuff like that. Pete Sports, who um, who supply me walkout tops and me training gear and stuff. Who else have I got on here? Lewis Williams, um, Family Jewelers in St. Helens. Um, Watson and Co. Hairdressers in St. Helens. Hmm, where else are we? <laughs> You're gonna have a grand design, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's about it. Oh, that, yeah, that's about it for now. Um, and also, I'd like to thank thank my brother for doing me, being my fitness coach. He's been doing a lot of scientific work with um, a couple of guys from H Heavy Duty Fight Management, Jamie and Matt. Like they're like a couple of scientists, clever as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, and. I'd like to thank my girlfriend because she's been preparing all my food and making sure everything's right all me. <laughs> it sounds terrible, but she's been doing all my washing, which I'm going through like two or three kids a day. <laughs> and she's been she's been helping me with the kids. She's been making sure I've got my ice baths ready or my hot baths um, of a morning. She's been sorting all my diets out, speaking to my brother, who's a good nutritionist. So everyone, do you know what? Everyone around me, if I've missed anyone out, my friends, family, people, people who are actually leaving me alone because they know I'm naughty when I'm hungry and training. (laughs) I've got a good... good I have. I've got everyone around me, really good people, and uh, I appreciate it from everyone. I can't thank anyone enough. Also, the, the, um, Rob Lloyd uh, from Four Corners, Jim, who's helping me um, with me striking and stuff like that for this fight. Do, do you know what? The list goes on. I've got a lot of good people around me. And it's, do you know when you actually start speaking it and you realise how many people you've got around you? It's good. <laughs> I can't get a bad thing for sure, mate. That's it. Well, Leader mate. Butcher, Chadwick. Many thanks for coming back on the show again, man. Best of luck. I'll be down in Newcastle, so hopefully we'll get a chance to catch up in person again. But uh, all the best until we uh, fight night, mate. 100%. Thank you so much. You take care, my friend. All the best. Thank you, John. Cheers, all the best. Bye. bye.